Innovation event for 2023. Good morning, everyone. I love the excitement and the energy, the chatter at the table. Uh, this is a big event. Uh, for our staff and our faculty, we've spent a lot of effort this past year uh, to bring you all here. And uh, I'm really uh, excited to see everyone all in one place. For every person here, someone else was declined the opportunity. And the reason you're here uh, is because your story was very compelling. You can tell us why you wanted to join the information school. You talked about your career aspirations, your life goals, uh, uh, a whole number of things that made us excited to have you here today. So congratulations on being here. And now that you're here, we should stop living in the past. And the goal is to get you out of here. Uh, those very same faculty and staff will spend the next two, three, four years uh, working with you uh, to help prepare you for the type of career that you want to seek in the information professions. And there's a lot of variety. This is a field that's been very good for me, and it's going to be exceptionally good for you as we look at different opportunities in the years ahead. The information professions are vital to every other human endeavor. Every field of inquiry, every field of achievement, every type of activity relies on creating, sharing, storing, leveraging information to support learning, growth, and decision making. Welcome to this profession. Now, many of you have had a full morning already. Uh, I've been to the gym, or more accurately, I went by the gym. Uh, there's this nice bakery next to my gym. Uh, but the point is, I guess, it's more accurate to say I have a gym membership. And sadly, that's not enough, right? They don't tell you that, the fine print. Uh, you've been offered a membership to the iSchool community, but membership alone is not enough. So I want you to think of the iSchool as a gym or a studio or a kitchen, uh, or a performance hall, or a recital hall, wherever you feel most creative, your garage, your backyard, where do you feel most engaged, where do you feel uh, more intellectually stimulated, make that the metaphor for the high school. Okay. Um, um, you will uh, work with our faculty, who will teach you and guide you and mentor you and show you the shape of things to come and show you the world as it is. Uh, but really, it's up to you to engage in that active, stimulated way uh, to get the most out of your membership. So don't be like me. You're not going to go by the high school. You're going to go to the high school every morning. All right. Uh, with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, our fearless leader, uh, Professor Aninde, Dean of the Information School. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. For those of you that I haven't had the chance to meet yet, my name is Lynn Day, as Matt said, and I am the Dean of the Information School. It is with tremendous pleasure that I welcome you to the school and to our 2023 iCommunity kickoff event. I'm really excited that you are all part of our community, and I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you. Thank you for being here today. I want to start uh, our event with our land acknowledgement. On behalf of the iSchool, I respectfully acknowledge that the University of Washington is situated on the traditional homelands of the Coast Salish people, the traditional home of all tribes and bands within the Duwamish, Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Without them, we would not have access to this gathering and to the dialogue. To acknowledge this land is to recognize its longer history and our place in that history. It is to recognize these lands and waters and the significance for the peoples who lived and continue to live in this region, whose practices and spiritualities were and are tied to the land and the water, and whose lives continue to enrich and develop in relationship to the land, waters, and other inhabitants today. In a few minutes, I'm going to invite you all to share a little bit about yourselves by answering a few anonymous questions using Mentimeter. So to participate, you'll need to go to the website on the screen, either go to mint.com or grab the QR code, um, and enter that participation code. Um, and uh, everybody's welcome to take part, including faculty and staff. I want to start by, while you're, while you're uh, logging into that system, uh, joining that system, I want to thank the many people that were involved in planning this morning's event and all the iWelcome events this week. Uh, can I ask them and all the iSchool staff that are here today to please stand? I know many of you are already standing. Thank you. These folks that were just standing, in addition to supporting your everyday student experience, our staff oversee the business of the school and are critical to the academic and research mission of the school. Uh, thank you for everything you do. 
Can, uh, can I get the high school faculty who are here to stand up? These are the people that are going to be leading your classrooms and your, and your research labs, and uh, many uh, will become familiar to you over your time at the Information School. And you're going to hear about working with our wonderful faculty in just a bit. Uh, today's program is going to last about an hour, in a and it's going to end with a moderated panel with our student leaders. One thing that I want to emphasize uh, is my hope, and really to reiterate what Matt has already shared, is that you're going to make the most of your time at the Information School. There are a number of ways that you can get involved above and beyond your coursework, including student groups and research, and today's student panel will highlight a few of those opportunities. But I really encourage you to think broadly about your goals and your talents and the skills that you bring to the program and the skills that you're, you'll gain in the program. There's a lot of space at the iSchool to take initiative and create a best fit opportunity. We're all here for you and we look forward to working with you uh, together. So speaking of we, I want to take a moment uh, for all of us to get to know each other a little bit. So I'm going to have a few questions that I'm going to ask my team to put up on the screen. Uh, and if you haven't already, please sign up on the poll, which is not on. Oh, sorry. It'll come back up. All right, so the first question while it's still coming up on the screen is, uh, and for those of you who are actually logged into the poll, you should see it. This is my first year at the UW. Yes or no? So three quarters, if you're a little over three quarters of you, this is your first year at the University of Washington. I know we have some of our graduate students who have been undergrads at the school before, and some of you are continuing students as well. Um, our second question is asking about which program you are a part of. Informatics, Master of Library and Information Science, Museology, Master of Science and Information Management, PhD program, or part of our faculty and staff. Definitely give you a sense of who's in the room right now. With informatics and MLIS buying it out for first place here. I wonder if that means the other programs are just smaller or uh, late risers. Either one's fine. Uh, our third question, let's move on to our third question. I will be studying from uh, the UW campus. Hybrid, some online, some on campus, or 100% online. I was really thrilled yesterday when I got to meet our, our MLIS students yesterday and to realize how many of you, because I know some are in this room, are actually in our online program but wanted to participate in person um, in our event. So not surprising, the vast majority are planning on studying the UW campus, but we have a number that are hybrid and a number that are online. Um, for this next question, I'm going to ask you to try and answer in just a couple of words, like no more than three words. You're going to get some instruction about not using spaces. Feel free to use spaces, that doesn't matter. Um, I'm at the iSchool because I'm passionate about. This is not the <laughs> Information is always a good one to see right in the middle. Although it keeps changing colors on me. Accessibility, people, community, libraries, knowledge. I wonder what some of the small ones are. Uh, student, oh, now it's too small. I can't read that. <laughs> these are new glasses. I'm going to leave it to you to read the really tiny ones because my eyes are not that good. Especially when it's moving around. Thank you. Thank you for answering these questions. I hope. I hope whatever tool we're using, we are actually capturing uh, the results of this summer. Um, the next question I want to ask is my biggest, and these are just for this, our students, although I guess faculty and staff can answer them too. My biggest school related fear is. <laughs> is someone afraid of pizza? <laughs> I've had some really bad pizza in my day, so I understand. But I can tell you where some really good pizza is. Failing, falling behind, friends, Ninja Turtles, I like that. Not graduating, 
stress, exams, time management. You can go. Alright. We're gonna find a new tool for next year. Debt. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move us to our last question. I'm hoping to get what out of my high school experience? A job, a degree, experience. Wow, that's pretty big. <laughs> Money, community, friends, connections, knowledge. I mean, I think the good thing is that I except for the very small things which I can't see very well. Uh, I expect that you would, you, there's going to be opportunities for you to get all of these things and more as part of the school. That's really great. Thank you for sharing. Um, before we move on to the next item on our agenda, I want to really re reiterate my enthusiasm for the start of the academic year. Thank you all, faculty, staff, and students, for bringing your talents to the Information School and to this community. The community aspect of our school is something that we believe in really strongly. The faculty and staff have made deep commitments to dismantling institutional barriers through our research, education, and daily work, and building a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive school and community. You'll hear from our ideas team soon, inclusion, diversity, equity, access, and sovereignty. But next, I want to, I want to first share our values statement. Um, and this really outlines our aspirations and expectations in terms of the iSchool community and how we're going to engage with each other. We create an environment that fosters appreciation, mutual respect, and engagement among and between members of the iSchool, UW community, and beyond, with special attention to the needs of people from historically marginalized communities. We envision a university in which all students, faculty, and staff participate fully and meaningfully in campus life without being subjected to discrimination, bias, or microaggressions. We condemn any expressions of racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, or any other instances of bias and discrimination against marginalized individuals or groups. Uh, a quick apology to those to the incoming MLIS students who heard this from me yesterday, um, but I, I think it bears repeating for this larger group. Um, we live in a particularly tur turbulent time uh, where the planet's health, the health of our democracy, uh, and individual health is not a given anymore. Between fires, floods, and hurricanes that are being caused by human intervention, threats to uh, election integrity, uh, threatened and real bans uh, on books, threats on libraries and librarians, uh, insurgency in our nation's capital, and a worldwide pandemic, the need for fair and equitable access to information, to educate, to inform, to share, and to drive decision making has never been greater. But never has it been more under attack. I can't impress upon you enough the importance of the path that you've all chosen to, to specialize in information science. But hopefully you already know this. No matter what challenges and opportunities you take on while you're students in the school and afterwards, know that you'll be making a difference with your information science degree. Education in information science is so critical to solving many of the most pressing problems of our time. Um, I also want to say that we are incredibly fortunate to be in one of the most progressive parts of this country. Um, while we have our own restrictions, particularly around affirmative action in the state of Washington, we experience a freedom to speak that is being curtailed um, throughout the rest of the country. Our peers at other institutions, at fantastic institutions and fantastic peers around the country, can't speak publicly about the challenges they face around academic freedom, book bannings, the rights of the queer and trans community, etc. That has afforded us the opportunity to double down on issues of social justice, indigenous information, and ways of knowing homelessness, and other social challenges that our colleagues in other parts of the country just cannot. So I want to make clear that that doesn't mean I think we're better than these other places. I think we are, but not for these reasons. <laughs> um, it does mean, though, that we as faculty and staff feel an immense obligation and responsibility to speak for those who can't, for the rest of the country, and to educate all of you to feel empowered to speak and to work to help those who are most in need. We don't take this obligation lightly, and you will all experience this in your time at the Information School. So, my last slide. I hope you have a wonderful year. And please, and, and you know, for those of you that are here in the school with us for multiple years, multiple years within the Information School, I want you to feel free to reach out to me to share your experiences at any time. 
you have ideas, you have questions, you have concerns, please reach out. I really do have an open door policy, and I really enjoy connecting with students. It is easily the best part of my day. I will also be sending email updates to the student community occasionally, so this isn't the last time you're going to hear from me, and not the last time you're going to hear from me today as well, as I will be moderating a student panel later. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to pass things back off to Matt, who's going to introduce the next speaker. Thank you and welcome. We will now hear from uh, three uh, uh, iSchool leaders who uh, will talk about different ways you can engage with segments of the iSchool community. And I remind each speaker that they have five minutes. Uh, so uh, our first speaker gives me pleasure to introduce Cynthia Del Rosario, our Ideas Program Advisor. Wow, this group is so amazing. Wait, let's see. I'm going to turn it over to you. Um, hello everyone, uh, I'm Nassim Parvin, I'm the Associate Dean of Ideas here at the iSchool. I uh, have just joined, uh, so it's been less than a month that I have joined the iSchool, um, but I want to um, you know, reiterate and emphasize um, uh, what Dean uh, they put it, uh, put it so well, uh, the emphasis on social justice that we have and the commitment uh, two ideas um, that's uh, really ingrained uh, as part of the iSchool. Uh, the Office of Ideas, uh, it's me and Cynthia, and we are um, open to your ideas. Please come to us, uh, please tell me what you think, please tell me about your experiences, and I hope in the coming year and years uh, we can actually make a difference together. Uh, and uh, Cynthia, would you like to say? Sorry about that introduction. It was a little awkward because I was so excited to see you all. I really wanted to get a photo of this. It's so amazing. Um, as Nassim said, uh, my name is or Matt. My name is Cynthia Del Rosario. I'm the Diversity Programs Advisor. So my role in the Office of Ideas is uh, with a strong focus on BIPOC and students from historically excluded groups, students with disability, LGBTQ, veterans, first-gen scholars, all uh, and anybody who's interested in connecting with diversity, you're my people. So, Nassim is our brand new associate dean. Can we welcome her, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe this is her first large event, so what an awesome event for that to be. So, just a little bit about our office. What we want to do is get you connected. How do you connect with us? Well, Wow, what a coincidence. Just tomorrow, we have a big event at the Intellectual House for lunch, and um, the purpose is to connect incoming students with the student boards. So, um, Matt talked about it a little bit, and Nan talked about it a little bit. Your experience at the iSchool will be so much stronger um, when you connect with community, and student boards is a great way to do that. I really encourage you to connect up with each program, has their own program student org. Hi, Museology. We have a brand new program here, too. I don't know if you've heard of it. Museology. Oh, there, our brand new program. First year. So we will get you started with your own student org. That's going to happen already in the plans. Uh, but to connect up with your program orgs and then affinity groups as well. So we're reinitiating a group called iQueries. I'm, yes, I'm trying to initiate Blacks in Informatics. We already have women in informatics. And any group that you would dream of, we can support you. Oh, whoops, I was just, okay, wasn't even watching my... Uh, yeah. So, yeah, student groups, exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> Students of color at LIS. Um, iQueries already has an event planned for October 5th. It's a meet and mingle, and, and when you come tomorrow, you'll find out more information. And volunteer. Yes. So there's a plenty of opportunities to volunteer. And one thing that I did forget to put on there, which I will send out information about and will be available tomorrow, is we have it's called iSchool Diversity Ambassadors. And those are uh, for our masters in information science, uh, our masters of science in information management, masters of library and information science in our PhD programs. We all have three, they are three separate um, ambassador programs, and those. You all get trained, and then you assist. The way I call it is, 
be the insider friend you wish you had while you were applying to the school. So they'll get trained on just some admissions um, protocols that the admissions committees are looking for, and um, well, you'll actually get feedback on your statements. So it's a super, super opportunity to help people as they're applying for the program. And if you have any ideas, like Nassim said, we're, we're open. Well, we have a few things coming up. We have co-hosted quarterly events with students, coffee and conversations. And if you have an idea, um, many of the programs that we started have been through, have been funded through the OMADC grant. And so we'll, so there's, I think, two deadlines. But it helps with the funding. So, and there are uh, programs that are to be sustainable. You can come talk to me. I'd love to get money. <laughs> and there we go. It's me. Thank you. All right. Next, we will hear from Professor Jin Han Lee, the Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs. We'll talk about how to best engage with faculty. Please welcome Dr. Lee. Good morning, everyone. It brings me great joy to be able to welcome you here. This is one of the favorite events um, of the year because there's so much energy and excitement here. Uh, so nice to meet you all. I am Jin Ha Lee, pronouns are she, her, and I'm a professor here. Um, I do research on popular cultural media, so these are the things I do. Or as my daughter say, she goes to school and plays video games. <laughs> and people pay her for that. And so if you're kind of wondering about how does that happen, you should come talk to me. Um, and I also have another hat as the Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs, which means that I support faculty so that they can thrive and be successful, um, and I try to make their lives better. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what is the best way to work with faculty at the iSchool. So when you think about what faculty do, right, the first thing that comes to your mind is probably like, oh yeah, they go to the university and they teach. And that's very much true, and that's how we're going to interface with a lot of you. But there's also a lot of other things that we do, so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about how our job actually looks like, right? So we teach, uh, we do this in the classroom, there's also the study abroad programs, and many excellent ones here. So definitely take advantage of that, um, highly recommend it. We also do research, right? And you might think that, oh, isn't that just for like faculty and PhD students? No, um, there's a lot of undergraduate and master's students who do research. I do a lot of game-related research with my students. We write papers about BTS. Um, so if you are interested, you should seek out those opportunities. Um, Oh, we also disseminate a lot of our scholarship, right? So we write a lot of papers, we work with different kind of communities, um, and we engage with media too. So once in a while, you'll see the professor on the TV or hear from the radio, and you'll be like, yeah, that's my professor, and you'll get excited. Um, governance. So the UW is a big organization, right? That means uh, it takes a lot to actually manage the organization, and we work with the dean and the provost to actually help um, govern that big organization, which means we have a lot of meetings. Sometimes I have like seven or eight back-to-back -back meetings all day, right? Um, but that's all to ensure that you have very high quality education here, because that is our primary goal. And most of all, we love to share, right? So you saw that Matt was very careful about the five minute time limit. It's because faculty obsess over things that they love and they will not stop talking <laughs> if you give them an opportunity. So that's why, um, and we love to do it with you as well. So I'm gonna give you sort of like the TLDR, three tips on how to get the most out of faculty at iSchool. Here are the three tips. Set up meeting, come prepared, and understand how each of us likes to communicate. Let me get into it a bit more. So setting up a meeting, all of us, most of us have some kind of office hours or some kind of rules about how to um, make appointments with us. Uh, sometimes you have to use email or other kinds of communications. Make sure that your meeting is in our calendar because if it's not on our calendar, we don't know it because our schedules are so hectic. Uh, so that is a tip for you. Make sure that you set the appointment and make sure you're on their calendar. 
Um, and don't wait till the end to meet with us, right? So when like the assignments due at midnight and you email the professor at 11.57 and say, Professor, I have a question about the assignment. Uh, no, come talk to us a little bit earlier, right? Uh, come prepared. It's often useful to think about like, hey, so I set up this appointment. I'm going to go and meet this professor. What are we going to talk about, right? So you made yourself. You know, like you set up an appointment, you're sitting there and you're looking at each other, it's like, hey, what do I say next? Right? So it's good to kind of think about, hey, what do I want to get out of this meeting? Is it because I wanted some more guidance on uh, the course material? Is it because I was interested in research? Is it because I just wanted to get a sense of like how life in academia is like? Or I just want some like life lessons. All good purposes. Or sometimes Students just come in because they want to talk to me about my favorite games, and I love doing that too. Uh, so think about what you want to get out of the meeting, and maybe think about some kind of questions that you want to ask them. Um, so that is the tip. Don't feel intimidated. We love talking to our students, believe it or not. Uh, we love to share, again, so don't ever feel intimidated that like, oh, can I talk to my professor or not? Find out our communication style, right? So everybody has their own communication style. I have four mobile phones, but I never pick it up because they're all on mute. I use it for playing games. Um, but I manage Discord servers, and that's the quickest way to get to me. That's not the case for the rest of the faculty. So you should figure out what actually works for them so you can best communicate with them and reach out and get the help that you need. Um, you also do this kind of evaluation at the end of the course. We're kind of used to that, right? That's really useful for the faculty, but you should communicate that earlier during the course because if there's things that they can do to improve the course, they can course correct during the course and that will benefit you as well, right? So don't ever wait till the last moment to communicate with us what's going on. Um, we like to hear about any issues, any challenges, any happy things that are going on in your life, like early on, right? So make sure you talk to us early. Don't ever feel bad about messaging us multiple times. Um, if you write your professor and then they don't respond to you, it's not because they don't care about you or they hate you. It's not that, I assure you. It's because they have 300 other messages <laughs> to take care of and it probably got buried. So don't ever feel, about, feel bad about poking us again and saying, hey, professor, I sent that message, um, and they will respond to you. Last thing, be professional about it. And like 99% of you are really good about this. But once in a while, we get this email, and the first line in the email is, yo, prof. <laughs> probably not the best way to start the conversation, right? So, you know, try to write a message in a professional way, engage us in a professional way. Uh, so that is the last tip. Um, I want to wrap up by saying you are now this part of a really special community and you see numbers like that, it's like, what? There's like 60,000 students here. Yes, you are one of them, but each one of you are very, very special to us, right? And there's one thing that as a faculty, we have our own excitements too, right? Like when we get that first paper out, when we get that first award, when we get that first grant research, uh, like the funding, they're all exciting, but you do that for like 20 years and it kind of gets old. <laughs> but one thing that never gets old is actually seeing the students smile and success, right? When they tell us about how much they're enjoying our class, when they tell us about how awesome they think our research is, or how much they love engaging with us, that never ever gets old, right? So you have a very, very special part in our heart. So I hope you remember that, and welcome to high school. Okay, our next speaker is a leading advocate for students and the student experience uh, here at the Information School, someone I work very closely with. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Wendy Phillips, Director of Student Services. Um, so, first I'm going to start off with a really, really important thing. If you're still hungry, we have some breakfast burritos. 
out there that you can go grab a second one. I know that that is the most important thing. Second most important thing is if you did not grab a beanie on your way in, we have some of those out there as well. That includes any staff and faculty that are here. We, you can grab a beanie as well on your way out. So, how many of you are looking for help with adjusting your fall schedule? <laughs> okay. Who, uh, who's a little concerned about how well they write a resume? Okay. Yeah, get some things. Um, who's maybe concerned about falling behind in classes? I, I think I saw that on the little word clown. Okay. Who may want to know uh, how to uh, ask questions about their student visa? Okay, so this is the type of questions that student services can help you with. I'm going to ask the student services staff to like put their hands in the air. So you can do there, there are a lot of us. And we all have different responsibilities. So I'm going to break down what we do. The first one is admissions. If you sent a message to IAS, you were answered by one of our admissions team staff. Our second thing is academics. Each program has an academic advisor and a program coordinator that will help support you with your academic classes, your degree requirements. Um, they will liaison with the iSchool administration about concerns you have with the program. They're also the great, great resources if you're getting into class and you feel in over your head. Talk to them. And as Jin Ha said, talk to them early. The earlier you come to us, when you experience a personal crisis um, or are struggling in a class, the more likely we are to be able to help you. So please come early. We also have a career team. This team will work with resumes, they work with employers to come on and visit with students and post jobs. They do workshops, uh, they have individual appointments. Utilize them and utilize them now. A lot of people wait until the very end to do that. It's unfortunately a little late. Your, your job, career search, starts now. We also do events that promote community. Um, like at this event, this is, falls under the Student Services Guide. Uh, we also support our student organizations, which you will have a chance to meet on Friday at the iAffinities event. I want to also point out a couple other things that we do since community was also a big thing on your list of things to do. Um, the most important of which is that we do have a candy bowl in the student services <laughs> office. Um, our office is Mary Gates Hall 420. Our office is open from 10 to 4 daily. We're right up by the student lounge, which is uh, 416, and the, student, and the um, larger of the computer labs for the iSchool. So if you need student things, fourth floor Mayor Gates Hall. Um, and as, dean mentioned, as, the, as the dean mentioned, we also do uh, host conversations with the dean, and you'll get some information about that. And not on this list is we have a new initiative that Alyssa, Alyssa <laughs> and Lindsay are going to do, is they're going to hold some I Walk events throughout fall quarter, just for people who want to just get together, chat, mingle, and just take a walk around this beautiful campus. The final thing that we do is we are, I don't want to say gatekeepers, but we are guides to the bigger University of Washington. So if you are really curious about what, who to reach out to about your financial aid or funding, um, we can point you to resources on campus or depending on the program resources outside of campus. Um, we are also in the process of hiring an iSchool liaison counselor who will be available for mental health appointments as well as doing mental health workshops with students. Um, that will be a part-time position. Hopefully we'll be probably in winter quarter before we see that filled. Um, is there anything, so I have a few seconds. Any? Oh no, I'm done. Yay. Thank you and welcome. All right, our next event. We have assembled a uh, student panel. Uh, we'll be addressing questions about the student experience, and I'd like to introduce each of our panelists. Uh, on the far right, uh, Afumia Asefa, 
uh, for the Master of Science in Information Management, uh, Joe Lolo for the Master of Library and in Information Science, Deanna Tone for the Undergraduate Informatics major, and Michelle Newman for the PhD program. Uh, the questions will be uh, uh, facilitated by our dean, so uh, please welcome our panel. Let's start with an easy one. Can you each tell us why you chose the I school and the particular program? I was trying to, I'm a career changer, trying to have a more of a data-driven lens in my next job. Um, and I really chose it because of the emphasis on social justice and the interdisciplinary nature of the education, which is what I really care about. Awesome. <laughs> my name is Michelle Newman. Um, I am a second year PhD advised by the one and only Dr. Jin Ha Lee. <laughs> um, I chose the iSchool primarily, honestly, because of my advisor, and I felt that when I talked to her for the first time, I just felt seen not only as what I wanted to study and research and saw myself doing for the rest of my life, but also as a person. And I think that that's something that I really appreciated here at the iSchool is feeling that it's not just me as a student, but me as a person. And additionally, I'll echo the, the possibility. I came from a very homogeneous, I came from music. We were all exactly the same and talked about Beethoven all the time. So uh, being able to be in a community of people who think differently and come from diverse backgrounds has been really great for me um, to kind of expand my horizons. So those were kind of the reasons that I chose to be here. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the Master of Library and Information Science program I was an English major in undergrad, and I originally wanted to teach either at the secondary or college level. I kind of fell out of love with that when I realized yeah, okay, right. that there's just so much more that I would have been able to do with my degree. I came to the MLIS program because I was interested in digital humanities, which is like the usage of different technologies to study and teach in the humanities. And as I looked at programs that I thought would be a good fit for that, I started seeing more and more advertisements for the LIS program here. And I wanted to give it a shot because I thought that it would be a place where I could learn a lot of new skills, but also continue to develop things I had already learned while I was an undergrad. And I want to keep the echo train going and echo what Michelle said about being in a very diverse community. I think the LIS program in particular has students who have a lot of different backgrounds and strengths, and I really appreciate being around that diverse group. Hi, I'm Deanna. Um, I'm part of the undergraduate information management program, and um, I really like to be a part of this specific program just because I like how it takes a human perspective on technology. Um, I came into the program not knowing what kind of role I wanted to go out of, and I feel like this program lets you have the different skill sets to kind of choose whether you want to go to product management or software development or UX UI design. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my second question is, uh, can you each of you describe one important thing that you found valuable for identifying and finding community here in the information school? Um, I am an online student, so uh, it, I knew it was going to be difficult to find community, or I thought it was going to be much more difficult. I showed up to the first student event, um, AIMS, which is the Association of Information Management Students, through in the winter, and it was just, everyone was so pleasant, so open about their own experiences, what they're learning, and so I was able to make friends and find community right away. Um, so I think just really showing up to events and being present is really all you have to do. 
Yeah, absolutely. I echo that again. Um, <laughs> but I think also a big thing for me is that it takes time. Um, one of the greatest things, as we said, is that we're a diverse community, but it's also a little bit of a catch-22 because, uh, you know, it can take a little bit of time to sort of find the people that you really vibe with in terms of things. But with that, I would say it's the most important thing is just being yourself and being open. Um, you would be surprised the amount of people that I've talked to, like, about Animal Crossing with and now have become great friends. So um, just be who you are and note that this is a big community. Everyone's nice, uh, but it, it'll take some time to sort of find your people because there are so many different types. So I think that just be okay if it's not like day one, you found everybody. You'll find somebody, I promise. Yeah, I agree with a lot of what was just said. And I really want to give a shout out to class projects. Uh, in the iSchool, you'll find that you will have to do a lot of group projects, even in online classes, and I've found that struggling through group work together really helps test your relationships with others. I've made some, I've made some great friends in class projects, especially in the iSchool, but I've also had some difficulties with group members that were slacking, and I just think that uh, being able to work with your peers in a variety of settings can really help build relationships. Like I met who I'd consider some of my best friends through a project that we worked on together last year. I also agree with the projects. I think that that's super important. You just gotta, yeah, working through those hard things with those people can show you who you really want to hang out with. Um, <laughs> um, and I also think that if there's any events, like I know for the FTAs, there's going to be a lot of um, events that are hosted by your peer mentors, so I think like being able to just go out there, be yourself, um, and you'll meet a lot of other people, and that's a great way to engage in the community. Thank you. Um, what do you wish you had known before joining the school? Yeah, probably 200 people in this room that are in the school for the very first time, or 150 or so that are in the school for the first time. What do you wish you had known before you started? Um, this has kind of been uh, mentioned earlier, is like how huge UW is, and there's a lot of resources and a lot of opportunities. It can honestly feel overwhelming. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you come in with your own ideas of what you want to do, but you might take a class and completely switch. So I think meeting with the career counselors, with your student coach and stuff to really outline what you want to do and be intentional about the opportunity, opportunities you're seeking and actually apply and not get overwhelmed by the resources that are out there. So just intentionally navigating the opportunities that are available to you. Um, yeah, I think for me it's know that we are a university and therefore there is some bureaucracy and not in a bad way, but in a, for example, if you need an independent study, you have to fill out a certain form in a certain way and submit it in a certain time frame. It's kind of these like small things that are like, how do we do this to make sure the school functions, right? And that you're actually getting to do what you want um, and making sure it runs smoothly is important. And I would kind of echo this idea that there's resources, there's people to help you with this, right? Uh, and kind of figuring out, I know at least from the PhD side, right, when do I turn to my advisor to help me with something, and when do I turn to student services, and a lot of that, in all honesty, comes from other students. Uh, we have a great, great student services, great faculty, um, but a lot of these kind of small, bureaucratic, when do I do this, how do I, where do I find funding to go to a conference? These types of things are often really like circulating in the community of students. So I'd also recommend uh, leaning on your fellow students, those who are older than you, because they have a lot of this knowledge. And I think that uh, we were really lucky in my year for the PhD because we had the Doctoral Student Association put together this whole panel of like, here's all the hidden places that you can find all these like random forms that you're supposed to find. And now they're all greatly collected on a Canvas site for us, which is great. So, um, but just kind of navigating that, I think is something that it's just gonna take time because it's a new place. Um, so be open, be honest. It's totally fine to ask and, and 
people here are really good at directing you, like, I don't know the answer, but this person probably does. So I think just that bureaucratic nature, and that's not something that's specific to the U of I school, it's specific to any university that you go to ever. So, and work and everywhere else. Everything's bureaucracy, but <laughs> that's kind of what I wish I knew. Honestly, I wish I knew just how many different ways I would be able to connect with my fellow students with, even if they were not in person. I think one of the places where I feel like I've connected with the most of my classmates has actually been through the MLIS program's Discord server. It's all online, like there are, we've never really done any voice calls or video calls, but just like being able to chat with other students about similar things to what Michelle said, or even just to have some chill conversations and find some shared interests or get recommendations. It's all been really awesome to just see how strongly the MLIS program has been able to connect over the digital medium. And I strongly recommend like getting involved with your classmates through any sort of like group chats or servers that you may have. I know that iSchool has a Slack chat that some students are in as well. And yeah, just I think those are a great place to stay connected. Uh, something that I wish I had known coming into this program is how great the career services is. They're super awesome. They helped me to find my internship, and they went through my resume with me. Um, they helped you go through the interviewing process, and you can like make appointments on Canvas, and it's super easy. And I think everyone should know about them because they do a lot of great work and find awesome opportunities for us. Thank you, Deanna. Um, we have time for each of you to answer this last question very briefly, uh, just in a sentence. Is there anything, is there any hidden gem on campus that you would like to share so they don't have to spend two plus years trying to find it for themselves? Yes, I went to UW for undergrad and I did not know about this until this year. Uh, there's a free professional headshot booth in Mary Gates Hall in room 134. You can go anytime between 9 to 5. And just update your LinkedIn or just get a new picture on file. This sounds very librarian of me, but the library? Um, <laughs> I think that it, one of the really cool things about scholarship nowadays is that a lot of it is online, but we also have a pretty great kind of walking through the stacks and getting to see all of the great stuff we have. Um, in the library and there's lots of study spaces and things. So I definitely would highly recommend that you check out the library and check out kind of all of the things that are there. And on top of that, we don't have one library. We have multiple libraries. So um, I have heard the engineering library is really, really nice. I haven't been there, but I plan on going. So um, that would definitely be my recommendation. Um, it's try that. Also, if you haven't been to Cafe Solstice on the app, you should go. <laughs> I can attest to the, the libraries. I work in the UW libraries, and they are just so amazing. Um, I think one of the greatest resources I have ever found through my years at UW has been Area 1, which is over in West Campus. It is a arcade and sound studio and makerspace where you can book the entire space for $40 and like connect with students over an entire afternoon. And I've found that it's a great place for me to be creative and have fun, and a great place to like bring your friends if they're visiting or if you want to hang out with someone in your cohort outside of class. Yeah, it's a great opportunity to like just hang out in the basement of a residence hall, play some video games. Yeah. I, I commuted all through undergrad, so I didn't have that experience. And it was great to have that now. Uh, one thing that I wish that I had known, a hidden gem on campus, is the STLP program. It's the Student Technology Loan Program. And I've used it many times. It's If you don't have a computer, or if your laptop just for some reason broke down, or if you want to follow like, photography stuff, you can just go there. Um, under Kane and in the hub, and you can get a really nice laptop, and then you can transfer all that to your own when you get it. Thank you. Thank you for all those words of wisdom. Please join me in thanking our student panel.
and I would like to apologize for mispronunciation. Our panelist's name is Apomia Asep. <laughs> All right, this brings us to the end of our program, but this is just the beginning of the activities we have planned for this week. And I will put up a QR code. Uh, let's see, orientation locations for info uh, will be at Mary Gates Hall North Lawn. Uh, MLIS will be in the Allen Library North Lawn Lobby. Um, Okay, I'm very confused. There's two different locations here. <laughs> uh, can someone in the know explain to me where? They're in different groups. So different based groups. Based on their group, that's okay. where they're going. Okay, so which, which group is where? MIS students know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and PhD will meet in Liddell 070. This QR code will give you a uh, list of the uh, location of the events and activities for the uh, rest of this week. Uh, I'll leave this up on the screen. The next time you and I are all gathered together like this will probably be at your graduation day. Uh, it is my privilege to uh, read the names of that event along with my fellow associate deans. So we'll see you then. All right. Have a great day. Thank you.